Okay, so this is the fourth sicha in Dvar Malchus. Dvar Malchus, you may know, probably know at this point, is a book that ever gave out um, after the ever said. After the ever said, I did everything I can, now it's up to you. And uh, as a follow-up sicha, they were talked about this idea of learning Nyanagol Mashiach as a preparation for Mashiach's coming, or as a uh, surest path of bringing about Mashiach. So in connection with that, they ever handed out a booklet which had four sikhas in Rebbe explaining the last two chapters in the Ram's Hilchas Malachim, which is the end of the book of Rambam, the book of Mishnah Torah. And that was part of it was like a encouragement to people to learn matters related to Mashiach. So this is the fourth such sikha, the fourth sikha that booklet. Earlier, yeah, they were, they, were, they were published earlier also. Most of them were actually originally published in Yiddish and they were translated for this booklet. I don't know the exact history, but there, there's some history of how it came about. But these the sikhas all exist. I, actually, this one is not in the sikhas. This one is in Sefer sikhas. I'm not sure if the original one here is Yiddish or this is the original Hebrew, but certainly the other sikhas in there, at least some of them are in Yiddish and Lakhat sikhas already, and they were translated Hebrew for this booklet by Malchus. Okay. So it begins. The Kesher and Sim Sefer Yad. Rambam, in connection with the Siyum, conclusion of learning the Rambam's book of Halachas, B'Shan this year, which is the year, I want to say, Tavshin Memvav. Okay, here. That year, Hasidim Hasidi B'Shvat and the 10th Shvat. So that year they conclude the Rambam and the 10th Shvat. Shaboy in which, Messiah Rambam Rabbi Yisro, which many Jews are concluding Mahzar Shlishi, the third round of Lumda Rambam, of learning all the Rambam, of learning all Rambam, Api Haminuk Shin Spashit and Skabba Tutsis Yisro, and according to the custom that is accepted amongst all Israel, this is a halachic designation, this idea of something accepted amongst all Israel, for Takana to take hold in halacha, it has to be accepted amongst the majority of Eden. There are Takanas that were established by the Sanhedrin, but were not accepted by the people, and therefore did not become halacha. Classic example, is Ezra wanted to establish that no one should read Shema or Davin after Zerah unless they've gone to Mikvah, to Balkhed, and that wasn't accepted by the people and therefore did not become a But there are other such examples. Anyway, there was referring to the minute of learning Rambam, even then, a third, three years in, as something that's accepted by all groups of Jewish people. To learn three prakim a day. Now, because it's the third year, so those who are, so therefore the, the third seum of three prakim would coincide with the first seum of one parak, right? One parak being exactly a third of three, obviously. For Makbul and therefore in consort, seum master shlishi, the limit sefer mitzvahs, and therefore it's also the third time people are learning entire sefer mitzvahs, which runs parallel to the three prakim, right? The, sefer, the, the program of learning a mitzvah day is to learn the mitzvahs that are being learned by those who are learning three prakim. So they run parallel, So that, which is why it's out of order. Meaning, when you learn sefer mitzvahs, it's not like you learn mitzvah one, the mitzvah two, the mitzvah three. You learn well, any random numbers because the, yeah, the mitzvahs you are learning are the mitzvahs related to, or the mitzvahs that are being learned by those who are learning three prakim. So, sefer mitzvahs is not in order to try to know. The Al-Ramam sets it up order of preference, and then by calendar, and then by life cycle, I think. So it starts off with like belief in God. And I think the end is, not mistaken, the end is um, a mitzvah of, of uh, inheritance in the one's life. If I'm not mistaken. If not mistaken. Anyway, so the um, seam of Rambam would also be the seam of Sefer Mitzvah, Gamma De Noshim through by women and children who are, learning, who are learning as part of this program. By Messiah and now today also is being completed, Gamma Zerishim, the first cycle. The limud Rambam say their limud the perek achad It's also uh, the first seum of those who are learning one perek a day. So I think this the Rambam started in Vav, right? So see the mizayim mechesim tis mem tes, right? The Rambam started in Vav and Mhei. So see the mechesim mem tes. Okay. So minaroy therefore it's appropriate this akiv al sima Rambam to speak about and address the seum of Rambam being in akasha machtus meishe Yisrael. In some area related to the unity of Jews. Why? Shekane, because 
because there are many Jews from all over the world, unite by learning the Rambam, which Rambam is Mishnah Torah, second to Torah, right? That's what Rambam calls it. Rambam calls it Mishnah Torah, as he explains it in his introduction, because it's a second to Torah, because a person learns Torah, written law, and then they learn the book of Rambam and they have all of the oral law. And between those two books, you have everything you need to know, which is why he says, this is the, it's the gathering of all the oral tradition. There's the written text and then the oral tradition, which explains the written text of Teresh Bapa is all collated in the book of Rambam in such a fashion that it's halachas, halachas, one halacha of the other without, without getting tangential, what's the word? Without, well, sorry? Tangential. Tangential? Yeah, without getting sidetracked to straight halachas, without an explanation, without background, just keeping it clear and concise. The Chala Torah Kul of all Torah. So it's this unity aspect of all Torah being learned by all Jews. And this includes laws that are not related nowadays, which is a unique feature of Rambam, which is not true of other halachic works. It did not include halachas that are not related, relevant today. So say halachas, the Bismillah, Trumas, Meiser, these are halachas that are not relevant today, and yet it's in the Rambam, although it's not in other books of halacha, including Adla Shukhan Aruch, including the Shukhan Aruch, it's not there. So this is unity of all of Torah, and many Jews learning it together. This, this creates the ultimate unity amongst Jews. Through the fact that Jews unite together with the Torah cool. By uniting all together to learn a tor- to learn something which incorporates all of Torah, which thus is the completion of Torah. So you have the completion of Torah, completion of Jews coming together. It's this beautiful thing. And therefore, it's appropriate to talk about Rambam's, the Sima Rambam, related to specifically the unity amongst Jews. And this completion of all of Torah is in such a fashion that it's available and ready for young and old in every single mitzvah and every single law, which is what the Rambam does, as opposed to other halachic works, which are more convoluted, require more depth, require more background, and are not as clear and concise as the Rambam's book of halachas. I imagine we're all familiar with these ideas. Okay, so now let's get into the actual scene. In the last parak of, quote, the laws of kings, their wars, and the king Mashiach. This is a unique title, which we'll puts it in quotations and puts a footnote, because if you look at the Rambam that most of us have, it's the last set of halachas is the laws of kings and their wars, and it's 12 chapters. The last two chapters talk about Mashiach. But there puts in a footnote that there's an old print in which this title, the laws of kings, their wars, and the king Mashiach, appears at the header of chapter 11 and 12 of Hulchus Malachim. So it's like an official title then that the Rebbe is using. So the last parak of these halachas, the laws of Mashiach, Shugam Sim V'chaisim Sefer Yad, is also the completion of the entire 14 books of halacha. So Kaisim Rambam, there the Rambam writes in his last parak, Kama Pratim, a number of details, but the Gael is say there with respect to the order of the Yemaisa Mashiach of the unveiling of the Messianic era. The name amongst the details are Ram Inyan HaKasher, Imachtushim Shri Yisrael. There's also something there related to the unity amongst Jews. The Zel and here's a quote from the Rambam, Perek Yud Beis Halacha Beis reads the Rambam quote Yira Mipshutim Shal Dev Diver Nevim. It's clear from the simp- from the clear from the plain reading of the words of the prophets Shmitzchilas Yemaisa Mashiach at the beginning of the pro- of the era of Mashiach. Tia there's going to be Machemes Goig and Magog a war known as the War of Goig and Magog. Okay. Whatever that war is doesn't get into the details. Shekoydim Machemes Goig and Magog and that preceding the war of Goyg and Magog, whatever that is, Yamad Navi, there will, there will arrive a prophet, Yasha Yisrael, to straighten the Jewish people, and to um, prepare their hearts for the imminent arrival of Mashiach. She the verse reads, here I am going to send you the prophet Elijah who is going to appear and he's going to return, uh, he'll restore the hearts of the fathers to their sons and the, son, and the hearts of the sons to their fathers. So I said that Rambam now. The Eneba, he does not arrive, not to announce purity on something which we think is pure. Not to announce that something is pure when we think it's impure. And not to announce um, illegitimacy of people whom we assume are, co- are good. Legitimate. And not to establish those who otherwise people think are legitimate. It's not his job. So his job is not to come and arrive and tell us you're Jewish, this guy's not Jewish, this one's a mamzer, this one's this, this one's that. I'm not going to do any of that. 
Rather, what's his job? To bring peace to the world. Shinemar is the first reason. And he's going to restore the hearts of the sons to their fathers. It is to bring unity, to prepare their hearts, as I mentioned before. Okay, so this is what he writes. Eliyahu is going to arrive sometime before Gagamogig to bring peace to the world and uh, open up the hearts and minds of the Jewish people. Now, Ram continues. Those that say, and they say, that Mashiach is going to arrive before Rio. So the first opinion said that he's going to arrive before Gogo Mogeg, but at the beginning of Mashiach's process, right? And the second opinion is, before the arrival of Mashiach. I was going to get into exactly what this dispute is here. It's just a timeline issue and what's going on here. But that's what it seems like at the moment. Okay. So now comes everyone's question. Sarah, long we have to understand. Aleph, number one. In the very next halacha, in Alacha Gimel, Christ of Adam Muhammad writes, the Emei Melech Mashiach, at the time of Mashiach, when he arrives, he talks about what Mashiach himself is going to do, right? So in Halacha Beit, he talks about what's going to happen before Mashiach comes, and the arrival of Eliyahu before that, or Eliyahu even before that, before Mashiach's arrival. Now in Halacha Beit, in Halacha Gimel, he talks about what Mashiach himself is going to do. And there he says, Yisyachsu Kulam al He's going to establish the lineage of everybody. He's not going to uh, say who's Jewish and not Jewish. Not what he's going to do. He'll just tell you which shade that you belong to. Presumably to tell you which part of Eretz Yisrael you go to. Right? So he's going to tell everybody which shade they belong to. He's going to say you come from this shade and you come from that shade. But he's not going to say of someone who is presumed legitimate. Zeh Mamza, this is an illegitimate child. This is Zeh Eved, this is the descendant of a slave. Why? Shadinu, the halacha is, Shemeshpacha, Shenitma, and Nitma. Halacha is, once a family has been absorbed in the Jewish community, it's, it's assumed Jewish. Right? So we don't have to. So someone who, you know, as, as a rabbi is doing a wedding, someone who's Jewish for the last four or five generations, you don't have to go back any farther than that. We, they're part of the Jewish community, they've been Jewish, they're Jewish. Now, is it possible that somewhere 15, 20 generations ago, there was some illegitimate marriage that renders all the daughters born from this person illegitimate, or all the sons even. Maybe yes, maybe no. But the halacha is, once they're intermingled to the Jewish community, they're part of the Jewish community, and that's the end of it. And therefore, the Mashiach is not going to undo that. He's just going to say who belongs to which shevet. That's all. Okay, so it says the Rebbe now. Bapiyah, you do a good life, you blush in a Rambam, based now, which is known in the Rambam's precise language. To quote the Rambam in his, in his introduction, in a clear and concise language. That's the Rambam's words describe his own wording. So therefore, in the move on, the following question arrives. I do have an Egel Eliyahu. When it comes to Eliyahu, and the Koyse of Rambam, Rambam writes, he's not going to come to tell us that someone who's assumed kosher is illegitimate, and not to legitimize someone who is presumed unlegitimate, but he uses the words, he doesn't derive. But Lachura Havle Lememar seemingly should have said, he's not going to say about one, on someone who's presumed kosher, that he's possible. And he's not going to say about someone who's possible, that kosher is kosher. Kaloshin, using the same language, that comes right afterwards, about Mashiach, he doesn't say, so why are we here when it comes to the audience? He say it doesn't arrive. So he, he describes this idea of uh, saying, you know, calling out Jews are illegitimate and then legitimizing Jews are legitimate and says that both Mashiach and Eliyahu Navi aren't going to do that. But the way in which he says it is different. When he describes Mashiach not doing it, he, say, he uses the normal, the, what you would think is the regular language. He's not going to pronounce about someone that he's not kosher. Or he's not going to pronounce about somebody that is kosher. Whereas when it comes to Eliyahu, Eliyahu Navi says, he doesn't arrive to make someone who's not kosher kosher. So what's this language? Any boy is not it doesn't arrive. Question one. Bayes, question two. The second clause in halacha bays where he brings the second opinion, which says there are those that say that Mashiach is going to arrive before Eliyahu Navi. I'm sorry, that Eliyahu is going to arrive before Mashiach is coming. How they now? Haplotta seemingly the dispute b'chora. Similarly, the dispute between the two opinions that I'm citing to, Enoela is limited to Megillah's man of Yosef, protect the time of when he arrives. 
whether it's Kaidan Muhammad Gagamogig, whether it's before the war of Gagamogig, I Kaidan Bias Mashiach, or before Mashiach's arrival, which is claim I mean to say Bismich is the Bias Mashiach Mamish, right next to Mashiach's coming. So actually it seems like they're, they're before. Right. The question is how much before. So I actually misread this. I, I read it. I'm seeing now I misread it. That's it. Right. But I thought that the war was already in the Mashiach in Mashiach's time. Doesn't seem like it's so. It's like, you know, the Ramam used the words, she would kill us in Moshe Mashiach, but it seems like it's before the actual yeah, onset. It's a, yeah. Whereas the second opinion is that it's just going to arrive Mamish right before Mashiach comes. So now, if the question is only when they arrive, then both opinions agree on what he's going to do, right? It's just a question of when they arrive, because no other distinction is made between the two opinions. And if it ever says, Abobad, Gamla Daitam, even according to the second opinion, which says he arrived right before, right before Mashiach is coming. He does not come to purify that which is impure and so on. Only to bring peace to the world and to awaken people's hearts and so on. Now, if that's the case, if both opinions agree on what he's going to do, then then the Rambam's order should have been different. First of all, he should discuss the order of events. When is he going to arrive? Whether it's Kaidim Muhammad's Gaga Mago Yamad Lavi, whether before the king, rather whether before the war he's going to arrive. And then should say the Ishmael Khamim, then there are those who disagree. Sha'imam would say, Shaqidim Basim Mashiach Yavilo, that he's gonna come right before Mashiach. And once you've established the due opinion about when he's going to arrive, Allah is only afterwards when the Gail Pulasa Shalilu then talk about what he's going to do. That ain't a bo, etc. It doesn't come for no other reason, Ella Lashim Shalaba Ilam only to bring peace. But it's not that I'm more to it. Madua Kaisi Bishin Yasai, why is he writing it out of order? Lahavi is a day and he said, as been a gale as Mabi Yasai, to bring the opinion about the change and when he's going to arrive, like the Indian Shabai Pligi, not right away when he's already discussing the issue about which he's disputing. El Akhir Ali Khazadvar by Gila Pulasai, only after he discusses at length what he's going to do and what he's not going to do, then he brings the other opinion. After Shabin is a lay pligi, even though with respect to excuse me, what he's going to do, he doesn't dispute. So the question becomes, what's he going to do? Yeah. So what's he going to do in coming to that second opinion? Yeah. Doesn't say anything. So this is the question we're stuck with. Because on the, on the surface level, it's just a question of timing. Mm -hmm. That's the case. Then tell us the dispute about timing and then what he's going to do, rather than tell us one opinion, when he's going to arrive, what he's going to do, and then another opinion about when he arrives. Says the Rebbe, you and Behekta and Mishal We'll understand this first by prefacing another question. Kate said you're talking, how is it possible? Kalukta or dispute in Yahweh El Yahu, if El Yahu is going to come, Kaidim Mohammed is going to come prior to the war, by Kaidim Bis Mashiach or just before the arrival of Mashiach. This is opposite the rule that works throughout all of Torah learning. You cannot argue about reality. You don't have arguments about reality. You have arguments about what to do about the reality, namely halacha, but not about the actual reality. Now, the fact that there are madrashim that argue about what happened is primarily a spiritual argument about the spiritual representation of what this story is. And according to their spiritual interpretation, this is the way it must have played out in the physical world. But in the physical world, only one story played out, and that is the literal story as described in Torah. How does that, that qualify to future events? I so there's, there was, event. It's a very good question. Why can't there be a dispute about future events? Yeah. There seems to be taking this call in about future events. Yeah. There can't be, there can't, in other words, either it's going to happen this way or it's going to happen that way. And we're assuming both opinions are true. Right? Both opinions have to be true. So how, how, how do you dispute what they're going to do and what they're not going to do? Either it's going to do it this way or you're going to do it that way. Anyway, you can see there was an answer that was going to avoid. But you're right. I thought about that also when I learned this morning. Like, you know, they're, they're speculating on the future. And they'll find out who's right and who's wrong, especially since the, Ramam, since the Ramam writes in this very halacha that all of these sages don't have a kabbalah about how this is going to happen. They're just they're speculating. Darren basically says that. Darren seems to be saying if it's a dispute, it's in halacha, it's a real thing. And they're actually arguing about the reality. If that's the case, how could they possibly argue about reality? The answer is going to resolve it, obviously, but it's interesting that Darren takes this as a question. Because right? if, if you read Darren's question, you just think they're speculating. So I'm, I have to pull up the halacha. Pull up the halacha and Rambam. Their damn language is basically just speculating. I'm going to pull it up one second. Mr. Library. 
شایفتیم 30 days حالا آخر گم یا یه چیز like this now after he says when they're going to come after he brings his two opinions then he says and all of these matters and things similar to that no one's going to know how it's going to be until they actually happen because these are hidden things to the prophets and even the sages don't have any tradition about this but only based on what they understand from the psukim and therefore there's many different disputes about this at any rate the order of these events and the details are not a, a central part of our religion and therefore a person should rather should not spend so much time in the, in the issues of agada like these, these stories and a person shouldn't spend too much time in medrash that talk about the coming of mashiach and likewise and shouldn't make this a primary because they don't bring us to love god or fear god and therefore don't try to think about also when mashiach is going to arrive and our sages said let the you know tipa haruha means like that let their spirits be splattered those who, who try to predict the future wait and believe that is going to come as we explained so i'm, I'm almost explicitly states they're speculating but the rabbi that's it's just interesting they were just like I don't want to say ignores it, but there basically says, okay, elsewhere there were deals with this issue, like why he's so cocking and what's going to happen. Mashiach comes to them and writes not to get into the details. That's, that's for another time. But anyway, there seems to be taking that this is a dispute to dispute in reality. How could they, how could they dispute the reality? Or maybe even well, if it's better. These are also opinions brought by Rabbi himself. So these are but then he goes on to say that even these opinions, they don't know. Even these, opinions, okay, even, right. even, even these sages who are disputing, they also don't know. Okay. It, it's not so simple because there are, there's other opinions that we're going to see soon that does not bring. Some of it is taking aside any opinions. So, but good question, and I don't know the answer. At any rate, we'll stick with Deborah's question. That uh de Bumetzius dispute in reality, how could they argue? Well, that is I like similarly, Michelle is Oisa Shallow. Same question could be asked. With respect to the Rambam statement that, so we have one dispute about when he's going to arrive, either before the war after or before Mashiach is coming. And then there's a statement that Rambam said of what he's going to do. And what is he going to do? Bring peace to the world. Okay. Now, that was going to tell us that even in that issue, even in that, there's an issue here. Because in this case, Rambam is taking a side. There's a dispute about what Elio and Avi is going to do. And Rambam is taking the view that he's going to bring peace to the world and not going to do anything else. Where he says, we're going to see, there's other opinions, he says he does more things. And if there says, the source of the Rambam's words about what, what Elio and is going to do, and that he's going to bring peace to the world, comes from the end of Masech Ideas. Where there it says, quote, Amr Rabbi Yeshua, Rabbi Yeshua says, I have it by tradition, to my, for my teacher, Rabbi Yochanan and Zakai. Hi, Moshe. So, Rabbi Yeshua said, I have it on tradition by Rabbi Yochanan, from Rabbi Yochanan and Zakai. Shisham and Mirabai, and Rabbi Yochanan and Zakai heard from his teacher. The Rabbi Mirabai and his teacher heard from his teacher. Halach Lamesh Messina going all the way back to Moshe at Sinai. She'ein Eliyahu Ba, Eliyahu did not arrive. Latame Latahir, to make things pure or impure. Larachik Olakarev, to distance families who are presumed Jewish, but are really not, or to bring close to families that seem not Jewish, but already are. He's not going to do any of that. Ella, rather, what's Eliyahu going to do? He's going to push away those who have forced their way into the Jewish people. Everybody knows they're illegitimate. They forced their way in. So people who Nobody knows that they're illegitimate. Halacha already is, halacha is. Once they're in, they're in. But then there are people who force their way into the community, but everybody knows they're illegitimate. So Elihim Elio, nobody's going to push away. Gerim not okay halacha is one way to put him. I don't think these guys are people who force their way in. Mamash with brute force. Zeraya means like by with the arm. But in yeah, some ways, I guess. And Velakara Hamaruchak of Zeraya. And to bring close those who have left by force. Doesn't say who forced them, whether they pushed their way themselves out of the community, or maybe they were dragged out of the community, or both. Okay. So you're left with that there are he doesn't push away those that are close, meaning those who have acquired the halacha of being in, integrated into the Jewish community. But if everybody knows they don't belong here, he's gonna push them out. And people who everybody knows they're supposed to be here, but they're not, he'll bring them back. 
This is a Rishua saying that he got from Rabbi Yehuda back to Moshe Rabbeinu. But Rabbi Yehuda says something else. Lakarev of Lelarachik. He's going to bring close families who have left, but not going to push away families who push their way in. Hamishpacha Akshera. These parentheses come from the um, the uh, Bartanura, classic commentary on the Mishnah. So Mishpacha Akshera, the kosher family, which is pushed away by force, who makarev, the brings him back. Avul Eni Merach, but doesn't push away. Oisin is just He's not going to push away families who push their way in by force. Okay, that's. So opinion number one is push away, bring in. And opinion number two is bring in, but not push away. Okay. Rabbi Shimon and says, Lahash for some of like us. That the Leo Navi comes to settle dispute, bring peace, or to, to settle disputes, whatever that means. Chachamim the Chacham say, Lelarachik, Lelakarev, not to push away families, not to bring them close. But Allah says, Shalom, to bring peace to the world. Shanemar, as the Prophet says, Himni Shalech. I'm sending Eliyahu Navi, and so on. And he's going to restore the hearts of fathers to their sons, and sons to their fathers. Okay, so clearly says the Rebbe, who says he's not coming to push anybody away, bring anybody back. He's going to bring peace. Now, with respect to this idea, that the Yeshua says, I have it from my teacher, heard it from his teacher, heard it from his teacher back to Moshe Rabbeinu. What does that mean? Um, we're looking at the Ram Malchus Simon Dalit. I put the link in the uh, group, Moshe. He's asking where it is. I don't think it's in the Kutasichas, it's in the Sefer Asichas. Okay, so now when it comes to the um, the uh, translation, the meaning of the words, Allah Moshe Messinai. That the Rishua says he got it from his teacher back to Moshe Rabbeinu. So the Lachura, which seemingly, by Allah Moshe Messina, when it comes to issues related to something that's by tradition from Moshe Rabbeinu, Hapirushim on the Kabbalah Mikpi Moshe, which are teachings that we heard directly from Moshe, Ein Machlik is by Hamashim Ponim. There cannot be in dispute about this. This is this is a quote from the Rambam in the introduction to Hirish Mishnayas, where and, and the Rambam's Halacha also brings in Halachas Mamim that besides too, the Rambam discusses where disputes come and where they exist. They exist basically either in lack of clear tradition or uh, using the principles of interpretation that Moshe Rabbeinu had, the 13 principles we read in Davening. But if something is Allah Lama Moshe Messina, there can't be a dispute. So how is there Allah Lama Moshe Messina over here? Rabbi, Rabbi Shu is claiming Allah Lama Moshe Messina, and, 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 and yet there's a dispute about what Elie is going to do. So Mavayar HaRambam appears Shem Mishnah. So the Rambam explains in his Peter Shem Mishnayis. Which this is what this is what we were reading, reading Mishnah and Idias. She explains. Rabbi Shua is not claiming that he heard these exact words from Moshe Rabbeinu. What they heard is the concept, the idea. Moshe talked about Mashiach's coming, and he relayed the words of Torah. With respect to Mishia's coming, immediately the Chacham says, "God says, if you're if you'll be cast out to the corners of the earth, I'll bring you back." It says, "V'shav Hashem lo God will return those captives, Umal Hashem alakecha, and God will circumcise the hearts of the people. So, okay, so Moshe said these words. So we're describing the messianic era. People are coming back. Hearts are opening up. Okay. But Vizula said, now in addition to that, the Higid lahem, he told them Gamkin as well, Mipiag Vora. From the words of from the word of Hashem, from the word of the, the mighty one, back to Moisev with respect to things happening around Mashiach's coming and the, and what precipitates Mashiach's coming. And there Moshe Rabbeinu told them, Mashiach to Moisev, there's going to be a certain person that's going to pre predate Mashiach, Liyasha Leharetz, to prepare the land. Vahu Elio, and this person is Elio. Vahidilahem, and he explained to them, Moshe Rabbeinu explained to Yeshua and then to this kingdom and so on. Shaishahu, this person, Elio Navi, is not going to add or subtract anything to Torah. What's he going to do? He's only going to remove difficulties. That's, that's a job, remove difficulties. The aim is the In this issue, Eliyahu is going to remove difficulties, no dispute. And this is the tradition back to Moshe Rabbeinu. So where is the Machlekes? But the dispute now arrives. Mahin. These difficulties that Eliyahu is going to remove 
these problems that, that the Jews are facing that are always going to move, what exactly are they? And there's a dispute. So they have a by tradition that Moshe Rabbein, that Eliyahu Novi is not going to change Torah, they're not going to adapt Torah, fine. What is he going to do? Remove obstacles the Jews are facing. But what exactly the nature of these obstacles that Moshe Rabbein, that Eliyahu Novi is facing? This is where dispute comes. So this is how the Ramam reconciles, how it's by tradition. But the dispute is with the interpretation of that tradition. Okay. So now that was asking in the same way he asked about the Rambam with respect to when Eliyahu is going to arrive. They were asked, how could there be a dispute in reality? Either you can arrive here or here, you can't dispute in reality. Similarly, the same thing is true with respect to the dispute of these sages in Idias. The Pirish Apostle King, in explaining the Apostle about Eliyahu Novi, the Haitian, the Abbas Abanam, he's going to restore the hearts of their fathers and he's going to, uh, to solve issues and restore problems that fathers and sons are facing. How do you argue about the reality? The Da'as Tanakam, according to Tanakam and the Buddha, so now we're quoting uh, these quotes now are the Ramah's interpretation of the Mishnah. That's what we're quoting here. So according to Tanakh and Rehuda, he's going to use Ruch HaKadosh to say, this one's a child of that one, right? Because a family who forces way in will be told you're out and a family who's been pushed out will be told to come in. So you say, oh, that one, child to that one belongs here. Mm-hmm. Even they've been held captive by whoever, right? Kolema meaning to say, the Torah, the Apostle, which says, and will store the hearts of sons to fathers, is a reference to lineage, connecting parents to their children. Except that one of them says, we're going to push away those who pushed their way in and bring close those who have fallen out. And this one says, we're going to bring in families who fell out, but not push away families that pushed their way in. Because according to his opinion, it's not such an obstacle, only to push away The only real obstacle, obstacle is that there are those who here don't belong here, and therefore the obstacle that needs to be removed is to push away those people. This is actually and this is really coming to be removed. In other words, Tanakh and both agree that the issue here is lineage. But what is the lineage problem? The fact that someone forces way into the Jewish people? Not so terrible. Back according to one opinion, that people left, that's a big problem. The other opinion is there was a problem, and therefore Leo is going to settle both of those. So this is Tanakhama and Rebuddha. But that's what Shimon of Shimon says, Avois Elamachachamim. When it says he's going to restore the hearts of sons to their fathers, it doesn't mean lineage, literally fathers and sons, but rather fathers are the sages, and the sons, they're the students. And therefore, she lived Kulam Shava. They're all going to have their hearts are going to be equal. Allah Yippa Bani Machlekes, and they won't have any disputes. I'm assuming that I'm interpreting it to mean disputes in halachas, disputes in Torah, settle all Torah disputes. And this is what it means to restore the hearts of fathers and sons, students and their teachers. It's taku, right? It's taku, that's right. So this, this, this is then, according to this opinion, the struggle that Aliyah and has to remove. Well, that's a chum, according to the sages, asi kra leave the pasuk in its literal meaning, leave always abanam, hearts of their fathers to sons, no need to explain, meaning bring peace. And this comes from the Taisus Yamtiv. Or the Rambam's interpretation to the words of the sages, just similar thing, which is the sages say, in he's not going to busy himself with lineage. But anybody who's called Jewish, he's Jewish. I call you Sachsul Emes, they're all connected to the truth of God, and that's it. And Torah is the father of all. So we don't have to worry about lineage, because whoever's here is here is Jewish, and that's the end of it. But what is the struggle people are living with? This is hatred amongst people. Because it's free. What's this? People are just freely hating each other. And this is the, the obstacle of hatred. And that's the obstacle that Leon has to remove. And this is why the sages say that Leon comes to bring peace amongst the Jewish people. And this is the opinion that Aram's taken. So, all to say, there was went in a long winded way to describe different opinions about what Eliyahu is going to do, all in relation to dealing with some problem that Moshe Rabbeinu promises Eliyahu will remove. And some of that problem is related to fathers and sons, hearts of fathers and sons. So what exactly is the hearts of fathers and sons? What exactly is the problem in the hearts of fathers and sons? Either it's lineage or it's students and their teachers, or it's literally hatred amongst people. Okay. But Amnam, um, however, you're going to slice this up, says the other, because at the end of the day, how does it look to the Messiah? This is again a dispute in reality. What's he going to do? 
according to the one opinion, Yahakis and Mukarov is going to push away those who have pushed away in, the Zroya forced away in. The Yikar Raven is going to bring close Esmer Chakam Berzoya and those who forcibly left. And Ladas Buddha, according to Buddha, no, Yikar Rev, he's going to bring Jews who have forcibly left back in. But he's not going to push away people. Well, that's the Shimon and according to the Rabbi Shimon and the Chachamim, Lo Yerachet, Lo Yekarev. He's not going to do either of those. And the last of Shalom Ba'alim is going to bring peace, either peace amongst the sages or peace amongst people in general. But it's completely different, and therefore the, it still remains a dispute in Mitzvahs. So we have two disputes in reality um, that the Rambam has to deal with, either in timing or what Eliyahu does. It doesn't need to be a dispute in Mitzvahs at all. Let's say what's you can be asking, what's his job? And then it's not a dispute of the serious, it's a dispute of what he has to do. What is he supposed to do? What's the difference between what he has to do and what he will do? What he will do is it describes him as serious. He's going to come and this is his. So then they're arguing about what, so they're arguing what he's going to do then. Yeah, but it could be more. You can, you can, you can change the semantics and say we're talking about what he has to do, but the reality is it's being what he's going to do. Yeah. You can see there was answer, and there was answer is going to be much more beautiful, although I understand your question. Yeah. I mean, you have to go through, I, I'm not, I don't know all of Shas, but you have to go through all of Shas and see if there's no precedent for this idea of someone arguing about what's going to happen in the future or speculating on what's going to happen in the future. Is that so out of the ordinary? I mean, especially when it comes to, especially when it comes to Yanim related to Mashiach's coming, open and you'll see all over disputes about what's going to happen in the future. So disputes about how Chris Mason is going to happen. There's all kinds of disputes like that. So unless they're going to resolve all those issues like this. I don't know, maybe, maybe we have to do that. seems like we do. But either way, in other words, once you have Rebbe's answer, Rebbe's answer is going to be so beautiful that it's kind of going to worth, be worthwhile mulling over the question. But but you're right, I, I struggled with the question as well when I learned it. So I'll have to ask the, um, I have to look up the hardest of Yerim, I have to look at the, uh, on the Dvar Malch, on the Tut's Alt's website, they, they posted the hardest of Yerim on the, on the Sikha, we'll look it up. Okay, let's begin the answer. Understanding all of this, by first prefacing, when we talk about the arrival of a Yoah Navi, loss of love in the future, there are two ways in which we can frame a Yoah Navi's arrival. Number one, as a part of and a, uh, means like a stage, Haschal of the beginning, the goal of the actual redemption. As if to say the redemption itself is a process. And the first step in the process is Eliyahu and of his arrival. Shazen, member of this we say, the Pasuk says, I'm going to send for you, the prophet, before the great and awesome day arrives. So when it says before the awesome day arrives, it actually means that this is stage one. That's one way of framing it. Bays, the second way of putting it is, Eliyahu his arrival is independent reality. is not part and parcel of the actual redemption. Plema meaning to say, even after Eliyahu Novi arrives, and will have done a number of accomplishments, it doesn't mean we're actually in the stage of Gula. It is an independent accomplishment. What does that mean? So said there about Dedach, you can think of it similar to Ubu Dugmas and you know comp- comparable to in none of his Nyanim, Upuloisiv and his accomplishments, is Mara Tanakh, when he lived here on earth in the times of Tanakh. He's a prophet in Tanakh. He, he arrived, he did something. Is that any more related to Mashiach's coming than uh, than than Yeshua walking to Israel or or Dovan Melech being king? They're all part of the process. So another stage in the process of Jewish existence is the arrival of Elio, but it isn't necessarily in and of itself a component of Gula. Gula hasn't started yet. In the same way Gula didn't start when Elio was here 3,000 years ago. Whether he did a different Achav, whether he was prophesizing to the King Achav, or his whole issue there with the uh, prophets of the Baal, the, the idol worship in the mountain of Karma, the whole story there. As well, as well, you know, similar to all the other details of the stories that are exist in Tanakh, and in Teresh Bapa, and the and the Mori, you have more stories about Eliyahu and Avi. About the history of Eliyahu, 
Before Elio Novi went up to heaven, as described in, 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 in Tanakh and Malachim. But Gufim Amish, but his body, right? So, Valderezze, so first of all, his arrival before Moshe's coming is as much attached to the Gula as his being here before he ascended to heaven. Likewise, there's a, the Iker, more importantly, when it is the Dan, com comparable to us, because we are now living after Elion of already went up to heaven. So his arrival before Mashiach's coming is more similar to what he's about to explain, which is, various different events and things that Elion Avi did after he went up to heaven in Tanakh. As described in Gemara, he arrived here to give a speech here, arrived here to help somebody else here, he helped Chania, he helped uh, Chania Mendoza there. Over Miyuchud, and specifically with Tanadvi Eliyahu Zutta, Tanadvi Eliyahu Rabba, is our teaching, Smell Eliyahu Navi. See, Eliyahu Navi has been doing things ever since he was born. Are those part and parcel of Gula? Not necessarily. And therefore, his arrival before Mashiach's coming is classified as his accomplishments during the Gullus era. At the end of the Gullus era, but still part of the Gullus era, not necessarily the first stage of Gula. So those are two ways of thinking about it. Is Elio Novi the first stage in Gula? Or is Elio Novi's arrival just another one of his accomplishments while we're in Gullus? The last thing he needs or the last thing he needs to do before Gullus. Yeah, the last thing he needs to do before Gullus. Yeah. I, I never does mention it here, but I was thinking, like, why is it different than his arrival to Abu Bris? Mm -hmm. Or to these the things Elio Novi has to do. And along, on, along the list is, at the end of Gula, he's got to arrive to bring peace to the world or to establish his lineage, depending on which opinion. Okay, so now, now we've established two ways in which Mashiach or Leonov can come. Now let's get back to the dispute. But Plupta he, the dispute then becomes the Pirush Apostle with regard to the Apostle which says, Hashem says, I'm going to send Leonov, who's going to restore the hearts of fathers to their sons, and so on. What of all of the various different things that Elio Novi is going to do are part of the Gula. Meaning to say like this, Elio Novi is going to arrive and do all of these things. But which of these things are part of the Gula and which are these things are just Elio Novi doing these things as he's done many other things in Gulas. So there's no dispute in, this, in, in, there's no dispute in reality anymore. Because mm -hmm. he's going to do all of them. The question is only which of these things are integral of, to the Gula and which of these things are just the uh, different things he's doing throughout his life. See, the, see why the answer is so brilliant? And then you see how it plays it out. It's beautiful. So, the Mishnah. The Mishnah, the dispute in the Mishnah is in whether he's going to push away families that push their way in or bring close families that have forcibly left. Or the other opinion is going to bring families that left but not push away families that are stuck in here. Or the last two opinions about bringing peace into the world. Based on that which you said above, she like to talk and put the that we cannot accept a dispute in reality. Hare, if we have to say, Lukula Alma, everybody agrees that he's going to do all these things. He's going to push away those who have pushed their way in Bizraya forcibly. And he's going to push away those, he's going to bring close those who have pushed their way out right, forcibly. They're not with the exception of a family is going to. A family has been mixed into the Jewish people. Shaloi noida psula, their 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 psul, their their illegitimacy is not known. So for those yanechana bekashos, they're going to leave them as they are kosher. Shadinu, because it's the halacha. Shemesh bakash and itma nitma, a family that's been absorbed into the Jewish people is absorbed. Masha enkin kishenet psula, but if they if we know they are illegitimate, but they're just forcing their way in, then you can push them out. Elishin eskaver bezray, they push their way in forcibly. Those are the ones they're going to push out. Okay. So he's going to do all of these things. He's definitely going to establish Jewish lineage and say, you are not Jewish out, you are Jewish, stay in. And when he says you are Jewish, that includes those who are not Jewish, but became Jewish by virtue of the fact that they pushed their way in, because that's the halacha establishing it. In other words, make this clear. Being Jewish is a halacha designation. So if halacha says this family is Jewish because they've been absorbed by Jewish people, then they are equally Jewish to someone who has a lineage, bloodline to Avraham Avinu. Because the fact that someone has a bloodline to Avraham Avinu makes him Jewish, because halacha says that you're Jewish. So the same Allah says this guy's Jewish. So why would Allah no push, no push him out? It's only if we know they're not Jewish, which means Allah has not designated them as Jewish yet, then he pushes them out. 
But all to say, a Leonov is going to do all of these things. So what's the plukta? What's the dispute then? A plukta, the dispute is, ain't no Allah, nothing other, there's only the other, there's nothing other than, ha'im inyan zeh. This idea that is establishing Jewish lineage is that hu b'chlal di salak b'yasr ha'chamas. Is that part and parcel of the fact that he's going to straighten out problems? And we have it by tradition back to Moshe Rabbeinu. The Bishua says, You heard from Rechel Mazakai, back to Moshe Rabbeinu. It is B.S. Eliyahu Bekesh Le Mashiach, with respect to Eliyahu Novi's arrival in connection to Mashiach. Or is the fact that Eliyahu Novi is going to be successful in establishing who is Jewish and who is not, is that an independent thing? And this is the dispute. Not whether he's going to do it or not. He's going to do all these things. The question is, when Moshe Rabbeinu said, Eliyahu Novi is stage one in Pula, what did he mean? What of the various different things Eliyahu Novi is going to do is that which Moshe Rabbeinu was talking about when he said, Eliyahu Novi is part and parcel of Gula. There's the question. And therefore, all these other things, if whatever opinion you are, the other things are, they're independent things that aren't part and parcel of removing obstacles to bring Mashiach himself. And therefore, das Tanakama, according to the Tanakama, bringing, pushing away those who have pushed away in forcibly, Bizraya, forcibly, the kid of Amiru Chakam Bizraya, and bringing close those who have fallen out forcibly, Shneim Bachlalaka, Muslim Amnal, these are both part of the problems. She is Salak Eliyahu, that Moshe Ben said Eliyahu is going to remove. The das of Yehuda, according to Yehuda, Silukachamas, the removal of obstacles, who only to bring close those who have fallen away forcibly. But to push away those who have forced their way in, even though Eliyahu will do it, because unless only a family that has been absorbed is considered absorbed. But when he is known to be not Jewish, pushed him away forcibly, he has to be pushed out. And if Eliyahu will do that, this is not part of the obstacles that Eliyahu is going to remove as a, as a specific stage one of Mashiach's coming. But the reason why he excludes this as part of the list is just fearless. That the fact that people force their way in isn't necessarily an issue. The bigger issue is people force their way out. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I, I'm trying to, but doesn't give any more elaboration here, but I mean, they have a thought for me, Yehudi, which is people who made their way into the Jewish community that we know they're not Jewish and end up marrying other Jews. But I guess if everybody knows they're not Jewish, no one's going to marry them, it's not a problem. Right. Maybe. Or Yehudi is people who had yet forced their way is people who are saying they're Jewish, not really you're Jewish, right. by reform conversion or by whatever. Right. right? But I guess if everybody knows they're not Jewish, then there's not really that much of an issue. I guess he's about to say. Okay. So this is Tanakam and Behuda. Well, that's Chacham. The Chacham say, "Ain Oishik biYuchsin." Eliyahu Novi's business is not Yuchsin. Well, there's no problem really with Yuchsin. Well, we may learn therefore automatically. Afshel Leo Yasaza, even though Leo, even though Leo Novi is going to do it. Ain Zebachal Polase Lasan Lake Chamos, and this is not part and parcel of his job as removing the obstacles. El Apula the Salk Halak Chasamim He Lasa Shalom Baran Ba'Ela. His primary objective is, as the stepping stone to bring Mashiach, is to make peace. And therefore, we'll conclude with this with this sit, and tomorrow we'll do the rest. Yeah. We'll pass the Rambam. The Rambam rules. He's not going to come to make that which is pure import pure. The Tara Tame, and not to say about that which is impure that is pure. Well, the lifts and are not to delegitimize people who have the presumption of kosher, and not to make those who are kosher, even though they have the assumption of impurity. Rambam quotes and says there's only going to bring peace, like the Chachamim, um, that is going to restore the hearts of sons to their fathers. So now that it tells us like this, this is a beautiful, beautiful deal. The Rambam cannot write, we cannot say that, that Elio is not going is, is not going to purify that which is pure and not going to establish something as impure as impure. 
Shekane, because the Mikrish net up soul, if the reality is that we know that there's an illegitimate thing here. A family about which we cannot say it's been intermixed by Allah. So how could we say, so I know if he's standing here, he knows someone's illegitimate, he's not going to say anything. We can't say that. We can't say, of course he's going to make them, he's going to say this one's illegitimate, this one's legitimate. How can you not do that? If I had the information, I would divulge it. If I had information, this person is not Jewish, I would put the guy through a conversion or make it known he's not Jewish, he doesn't marry, not a Jewish person. And Leon is going to know this information and not going to say? So he, we cannot say definitively, a little is not going to do it. So what is he right there? He doesn't come to do this. He might. That's not why he's coming. Because his arrival as part and parcel of a Shia coming is not about establishing uh, who's Jewish and who's not. Even though he'll do that anyway. That's not why he's coming. It's not his arrival in the bar. It means to say the arrival of a Leo. About which the prophet says, God says, I'm going to send Elio, along with the tradition we have from Moshe Rabbeinu, that this arrival is Shisalik Yosar Hamasim, and he's going to remove obstacles. Those obstacles, it's not to make kosher, in kosher, anything like that. Actually, talking, even though the reality is, she started last as the poil, he may actually have to do that. In accordance with the circumstances. So if he arrives, he knows the family here, it's not Jewish, he'll say, you're not Jewish. Right? But the arrival of Eliyahu, about which the prophet has prophesied, he lost him, shalom ba'olam, shenem rebbe heishi leiv avis abadim. And this is a beautiful deal, this language of ene ba'olam. It's so gishmak, it's perfect. Not that he's not going to do it, he will. That's not why he's here. It's such a perfect, perfect gishmak thing. Like if that was the only question ever asked, and this was the answer, it would be beautiful. Okay, and then tomorrow we're going to look at the other dispute, which is when he's going to arrive. Is he going to arrive before the war or arrive before, directly before Mashiach is coming? We're going to see how that's also not a machlekas in Mitzvahs. I'm going to look up these uh, artists here and see what they have to say about this meaning of uh, the fact that I'm right, that's speculative. If, if he's going to come to St. John how's it before the war very, very dramatic? How does he bring Shalom Ba'olam to Zikagam Magu afterwards? Or the other way, how is there a war of Belgium Magu afterwards? After the opening, for peace. That's a pretty simple question. So Shalom Ba'olam is, is limited to Jews? That's what you're suggesting? Maybe. Let's see how the words it again. And it's funny because Ramam starts with the war of Gagam mm -hmm. and then says, Oh, by the way, before Gagam Magig, there's going to be this person, Eliyahu, he's going to bring peace. Right. It's interesting. Good question. I have to look up the Nafarshan. Okay, good.